Hey there, John Morris here, johnmorrisonline.com. Welcome back to another episode of The John Morris Show. So I got this email from Levi, and he said, I appreciate the blunt honesty of your emails. One of the reasons why I've been so successful at anything I put my mind to is because I don't waste my time trying to find the easiest or cheapest path there. I know that if I want to get good at something quickly, I need to put in the long, hard hours as well as some dollars. It's been a year now since I've started coding. I probably spent well around 400 or so dollars on learning resources alone. I've had a Linda subscription for about five courses. I purchased over 25 courses on Udemy. I purchased five books on programming, three of which are PHP and MySQL related. And I currently have a Laracast, Laracast subscription that I'm paying monthly for. It's been a year and I'm already being paid by my current company, not a web development company, to develop a new online order entry system. Thank you for the encouragement over this past year. Now, I think some of you, hearing how he went from not doing anything with coding, starting out learning, to being able to get hired by a company to build the system for them within a year, I think some of you will find that inspiring because that is, I mean, I'm sure there'll be some of you that will jump on here and be like, I learned how to code in you know a day. But learning, going from nowhere basically in terms of knowing how to code to getting hired to build an online order entry system within a year is pretty quick so i'm sure some hopefully some of you will find that inspiring that said i know that some of you will also probably find that a little bit annoying like like what am i doing wrong why am i not doing getting there that fast so all i can really add to this is yep when you act when you work hard and you invest in yourself, pretty amazing what can happen and how fast it can happen. Now, again, just to kind of kind of continue on this thread, because I've talked about this in the past before, just think about this from a purely black and white perspective. Now, Levi invested 400 bucks over the course of a year in himself, and in that year, he got an ROI and I would guess the thousands. I don't know what they're paying him to build this online order entry system, but I would guess it's probably somewhere in the thousands. So that alone, just that one aspect of it is more than worth the investment. Not to mention that in that, he learned skills that are going to make him thousands more over the course of his career. Now, he may even get to the point where He's able to, you know, get freelance gigs or or work for a company or whatever, and he's making thousands per month off of this four hundred dollars that he invested in, in himself. So just logically, it, if you were this hard nose ROI is all that matters investor, if you're looking at this from that standpoint, it's still a great investment. Not to mention that you're learning lifelong skills that you'll be able to learn beyond the use beyond just this one time that that he's he's using them here you know and 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 even beyond that not to mention how you'll feel right not not working some horrifying 9 to 5 job or not being forced to let some clown boss you around not having that feeling like you failed or or wondering what happened how did i get here I'll, I, i've been through all of that stuff and that stuff can be pretty devastating so not feeling that how much is that actually worth? You know, that That's less of the hard-nosed ROI, but it absolutely has value in our lives and, and how we go about living day to day. So it, to me, it's kind of like the, say, the old saying goes, fortune favors the bold. If you take action, you work hard, and you invest in yourself, you'll find fortune suddenly turning in your favor. And who knows how fast you could be in the career you dream of or living the life that you want. You just have to get after it and be willing to invest in yourself and be willing to work hard. Now, speaking of, one of the harder things that I've found for developers to figure out is what you might call the backside of learning how to code and the technical programming and so forth. And that is, once you've learned how to code, what now? How do I get hired? How do I get uh, work? You know, somebody give me some money for this stuff. I spent all this time learning it. Someone pay me, right? And I think that's actually what makes what we do here a little bit unique because 
there are probably thousands of developers out there that could teach you how to code. Uh, there's all sorts of courses and stuff, tutorials and stuff on that. But it seems like there's a lot fewer who will and can teach you how to then take that code and turn it into a career, turn it into a livelihood, turn it into money, ultimately. That can be a little bit tricker, trickier and maybe even a little bit taboo, right? In the development world, people tend to be like, oh, we shouldn't talk about this, etc. But I don't care. That's the thing about it. You know, I was a, <laughs> I was, I grew up <laughs> in a, I was a river rat from a podunk town in Nebraska. Literally, the town had about 200 people that lived in it. And uh, I've had to scratch and claw and fight, and I don't want to go into this big sob story, but I've had to, everything that I've got in my life, I've had to fight for. So I don't really have time for taboo. I don't care if people think we should or shouldn't talk about it. It doesn't matter to me because it, uh, I've learned not to let what other people think uh, affect me or derail me from what I want out of life. So I could care less if people think it's tacky or taboo or whatever. This is the reality of life and having to fight and scratch and claw for, for what you want out of it. So I'll talk about the stuff. And in that, you know, my story a little bit, I, I did go from this kind of river rat from this podunk town. I literally lived in a trailer growing up. We were dirt poor. I went days at a time without eating. I mean, just just from the worst possible conditions or worst possible um, starting point that you could imagine, I was able to go from there to working with, in, in my web development career, some of the mo most well-known online personalities or celebrities on the planet. So, uh, a guy like Michael Hyatt, who's a New York Times bestselling author, has this monster blog that hundreds of thousands of people visit uh, daily, monthly, I can't remember, but just really well-known, has written several best-selling books, etc. Or uh, Lewis Howes, uh, who's been on Ellen twice, as far as I can tell, uh, maybe more than that. Uh, he's been on Today with Hoda and Kathy Lee. He's been on a bunch of other TV shows, just really well-known guy. Worked with him. Uh, I've sat on at the top floor of the World Trade Center, New World Trade Center Towers, in the Inc. Magazine offices, working with them. I mean, all sorts of crazy stuff that when I was a kid, that this kind of hood rat, river rat kid from this small little town in Nebraska, I never imagined that I would be able to do. And so, and, and really, not being handed anything, really, really, I feel like never caught a break in all of that. And I know that's kind of a cliche story, but I've literally had to fight and scratch and claw for every ounce of that. So, as you might have imagined, I've learned a few things along the way. So, I feel like I'm someone who can speak to how to, to, to go about doing this. Now, one of those things is how to manipulate Upwork just every little w which way uh, according to your whim to bring you more, better, higher paying clients kind of on demand. As a matter of fact, I got to one point uh, when I was really heavily on these freelance sites where I had to start turning off my availability on there because I was go getting so many job invites on a daily basis that me not responding or turning them down was starting to hurt my score. They have this thing where when you get invited to a job, if you don't respond to it or you turn it down, it's like this uh, job uh, invite. I can't remember the name of the score, but it's like this invite response score, whatever. Anyway, it can start to hurt your ranking and, and, and make you rank lower. And I didn't want that. So they have the ability for you to turn off your availability so that doesn't happen. So I actually had to start doing that. I would, uh, go, whenever I was on a project, I'd get towards the end of the completion, I'd go on there, I'd turn it on, and within a day or two, I'd get 20, 10, 20 invites to different jobs. And I would literally be able to just go through and pick which one I wanted. Pretty much any one that I did actually bid on, I would get hired for. And then I'd have to turn my availability back off just because I was getting so many invites. So that I was able to get to that point, uh, and again, I've learned a few things about how to do that along the way. So anyway, I'm going to show you my exact process. I've talked about this a little bit here, but on June 3rd, which is, this is why I'm talking about this a little bit more today, because it's coming up here real soon, 
I'm releasing episode three of my Get Paid to Code video series on Patreon. And in that, what's cool about it is we're going to, it's a screencast. I've already recorded. It's a screencast. It's ready to go. I'm just going to release it on June 3rd. So in it, we log into my actual Upwork account, my freelancer account, and I show you how I go in there and how I find the highest paying jobs from the best clients that are the things that I want to do, et cetera. And then how to systematically break down the job proposal that was written so you can formulate a compelling bid. The, the, it's, it's not the same response every time. That's what the big mistake a lot of people make is, what do I write? Well, it's not the same thing every time. It depends what they put in their job description. You kind of have to react to that. But it's the same process. It's looking for the same things. It's analyzing it in the same way. And it's a, a, a template or a format that is similar. You just fill it in with different details. And so I show you exactly what I'm looking for, exactly what that template is, the process that I use for breaking down a job proposal and formulating the most compelling bid that you can. That doesn't mean that you're going to win every single job. But it does mean that you're going to put your best foot forward every time. You're going to make the most compelling bid that you can. And then you go from there. And one of the unique things I think about it is that it kind of forces people to respond to you. Because ultimately, that's what you want. You want a response. That's the, you don't want, see, a lot of people try to hit the home run. You just need a base hit. The home run is getting hired. The base hit is getting a response. So you want to start with the base hit and then work up. To, to kind of getting around the bases from there. And so that's the process that I show you will allow you to do that. So if you're someone who is on that uh, kind of in that vein of you want to start earning some dough with your code, you want to start getting paid to do this, then you definitely don't want to miss that episode. And like I said, just a few days left until it goes live. So if you want in on that, uh, johnmorrisonline.com slash Patreon. That'll have all the details. Uh, you can, you know, there's a bunch more stuff that you get there. My PHP 101 course, my lightning responsive course, all my source code from YouTube videos, etc. Just a bunch of stuff. Plus my get paid to code video training series and episode three going live on June 3rd. So again, johnmorrisonline.com slash Patreon. But whatever you do, take Levi as an example. Follow his lead. Take action. Work hard. And be willing to invest in yourself because the ROI on investing yourself is probably one of the best investments that you can make. And you might be surprised just how quickly your life can change if that's what you're after. All right, that'll do it for this episode. Again, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, wherever the button is on here. And we'll talk to you next time.